Well, hello there. This is Vitualis the Chess Noob, learning and having fun with chess. I'm really, really excited to show you this game, which was a game I played on chess.com's daily championship. So it's a tournament played against a gentleman from India. And one of the interesting things with playing on chess.com is that you play opponents from all over the world. And in different parts of the world, there are different traditions on what is expected in openings. And in this game, my opponent played something I rarely face against, which is the King's Fianchetto opening, also known as the Hungarian opening or the Benko opening. Uh, my reading suggests that this opening is much more common with players from India. And of course, my opponent is from India. Now against this move, um, I don't have any particular theory. I just take a full center. E5. Uh, again, Fianchetto the bishop, that's the logic with the uh, Benko opening or the Hungarian opening. Take the full center. Um, here, defended. Now they play a little bit of an inaccuracy now with e4. I couldn't see any reason not to capture. I take, they take back. Uh, and you can see that was actually a bit of uh, inaccuracy. It's better for the knight to come out, better for them to develop. Here, I develop, attack the bishop. They now develop their knight. You can see it's actually better for white to uh, retreat their bishop because in this position I can take their strong fianchetto bishop and that's actually not good for white. However in this position I wasn't sure I wanted to do that. It looks like white will regain some tempo so I decided to develop instead. Uh, now that was a bit of a mistake. Uh, however I am still a little bit ahead but I lose a little bit of my advantage. They now develop their other knight. Again they don't want to block in their diagonal. And in this position because it's a daily game um, there's sometimes quite a big gap between moves. I lost sight of continuity and I make a straight up blunder. So here I was thinking hmm they're about to castle maybe kingside. If I jam my Bishop there, that's very, very annoying for white. They can't, uh, they won't be able to castle. They can't easily dislodge my bishop either. And then potentially the other thing I'm seeing is I'm getting an attack on the opponent's weak f pawn on f2. And potentially if the bishop is there, there's potentially a checkmate available. So that's what I do. The bishop to h3. <laughs> Straight up blunder because it's no longer defending the b7 pawn and it's just hanging. And white punishes me right away and captures. And when I saw this position, I thought, oh, that was a bit dumb. But well, one of the things that you can do, uh, because you know it looks like it's attacking there as well, is I'm gonna double down. So treat a blunder like it is a gambit. So I'm gambiting pieces because effectively I've already done a gambit. Uh, I can treat it like a gambit. So try to capture the initiative. And so that's what I do. The best move here is to, whoops, is to move the knight to c6. Um, no, no, sorry, not c6, sorry. Knight to, c, uh, to d7 because that now defends the rook with the queen developing a piece. However, instead I decided to play knight to g4. And can you see my logic here? If white, you know, goes, oh, I'm going to take the rook, then that is mate, with the king having no escape squares. So that's what I, that's what I did. However, here white saw through that and decided to defend the f pawn with, um, whoops, with knight to e4, there we go. But you can see that's actually a bit of a mistake. The best move was to put pawn to d4 because firstly it blocks the bishop's access to the f pawn and also uh, wins tempo by attacking my bishop. This however does defend, seems to make sense, attacks my bishop as well. And here I saw a really cool move and that was the move that was in the thumbnail. Bishop to g2. The bishops are now looking at each other and I sort of imagine this is like in an old spaghetti western. Two cowboys facing off each other. It's a showdown, a duel at high noon. Question is, who is going to blink first? Now the correct move for white is knight 
has to capture, and I actually did calculate this uh, when I made that move, knight has to capture to remove that threat of mate, uh, and then uh, what I can do is take the bishop, so take the bishop rather than the rook, they take back, but now I get queen to d5, it's a fork of the rook and the knight, uh, white's best move is probably the castle, and then I win that back, and potentially it's okay. Down a little bit of material, but it's not too bad. So I calculated that, I thought that was potentially okay, but in this position, what white did was they blinked. They decided to fire first, they played bishop, captured rook, and it's a blunder. Because now I have, again, bishop takes that knight. The removing the defender of the f pawn. Now, white obviously didn't see my tactical ID. I'm not sure if you see it. So they captured back. They probably thought they won the exchange. But now I have knight captures the pawn of f2. It's defended, fork of the rook and queen, and the queen is smothered. So I win the queen. Uh, and this position, they um, they sort of do an uh, intemperate move, trying to attack. That wasn't necessary because obviously I'm going to attack the queen. I'm going to take the queen, and after I've taken the queen, I actually can't evacuate my my knight. That knight is dead anyway. They had an opportunity to threaten another piece. So here, take the queen, completely winning. And my strategy, my approach from now on is quite simple: takes short castles, get the king out of danger. Now they have one, two, three four, five pieces. I only have four, one, two, three, four, but I have the queen. So the goal is to play conservatively, try to trade down pieces, simplify into an end game where the queen's uh, superiority will be felt. So let's go. So they push, that's fine, develop my knights. They push, and here what I really want to do is potentially to, to, oops, to push the knight, out and get it into play, knight again. You can see that wasn't the most accurate to suggest h6 first because that will then prevent uh, uh, white's dark square bishop from pinning my knight. But they didn't see that, they saw the attack and they decided to retreat their bishop. Now that now allows me to move my uh, rook to the e-file, improving the rook. Stockfish reckons I didn't need to do that, that I could attack immediately because that, of course, is pinned. I thought I wanted to keep that for the time being because it sort of constrains the movement of their knight. Uh, and one of the things that they tend to do is they're very keen on this Fianchetto idea, but this doesn't work because there's no real target there. You know, that, that bishop is pretty much stuck and their best move was here. And by, keep, and by taking their eye off that diagonal, my knight now jumps forward to g4, which now has a fork on the pawn on h2, but also on the e3 square, which of course comes with a potential uh, very, very lovely fork. They move their uh, pawn out of the way, but now knight e3, triple absolute fork. Uh, they move the king out of the way, that is their best move. And here I just decide to trade down, didn't calculate it properly. This is actually better because I can capture the bishop and they actually can't capture the knight back right away. But I decided to take um, the rook, get rid of the rooks. Uh, they took back this way and now I saw this, so push. That is pinned. I'm not sure they appreciated the fact that it was pinned. They capture, that's a mistake. Capture straight back, they can't capture back the rook. Attack the rook, that's fine, move out. Um, I decided, well, I was going to move out of the way, but then I, yeah, that's right, I decided to pin it. First, they move the king out of the way, rook now with the attack, and I thought they were probably going to play this to defend, and in this position, I had to think, you know, why don't I just trade away the rook? If I trade away the rook, we enter an end game, queen and bishop versus bishop and rook, I'm completely winning, and I get an immediate infiltration with my queen. So, captures, captures, Queen forward infiltration with check, king forced here, only move, they've got now a back rank problem, and so queen to e2, that's a fork, what are they going to do? Basically I'm baiting them to move the, well they obviously they have to move the rook, but I'm baiting them to move the rook off the back rank, they have to move I think here or here, because that rook must stay on the back rank to defend the king. There's actually a 
mating pattern here. They don't see that. They move the rook forward, which is a blunder, to defend the pawn. But now, queen to the d1, check, forced move. Bishop has to block the check. And now, bishop, a3, these weaknesses with pushing the b pawn does lead to problems with the safety of, uh, safety of the king. And in this position, they opt to resign because there's nothing they can do. Next move, that will be mate. They could potentially, you know, make it last a little bit longer by forcing me to capture uh, the rook first, but mate is basically inedible. Good game, GG. The big takeaway from this game is that when you blunder, a potential approach is to treat it like it was an aggressive gambit. Sometimes it works really, really well. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.